Next week will mark three months since the devastating flash floods in Johnson County. Four people died and about 10 miles of homes were damaged or destroyed. Now FEMA has released new flood zone maps for that area. Investigative reporter Miranda Combs went back to Johnson County to see if people in the floodplain are staying or leaving. Sowing seed like this is typically the end of a lot of hard work, not unusual in the fall. But what happened here three months ago was anything but usual. In fact, it was historic. Oh my God, it's going to hit our house too. Oh, they can't get out. Oh, you know they're scared to death. Oh my God. Oh Lord Jesus, please be with these people in us. The area we're standing in right now, we would have been completely underwater. Three months later, you can still see the water line on top of this roof. Willard Burton oversees Johnson County's floodplain management, and right now the focus is on cleaning up the worst flood they'd ever seen. They use the term historic, things that have never happened in this area. It may never see it again, and you know, and it may happen tomorrow. With hopes that it won't be tomorrow, contractors have made progress in the past few months. Cleaning up and cleaning out the creek, burning trash and dumping pieces of memories. They're living where their parents lived, where their grandparents lived. Burton says it's not about finances, it's about family. They have one of two options. They rebuild where they're at, meet the requirements of the ordinance, or they look to purchase property somewhere else. County officials say it is okay to rebuild in a flood zone as long as you follow county ordinances, one being that your living space has to be so far off the ground like this home right here. Interesting though, just a few months ago, this trailer park was full of homes and so far only two have returned. The people are more educated now. It's sad to say, but it took something like this. People, the number of phone calls that I get wanting to know information, wanting to know if they're in a flood zone because they've never worried about it before. Not prompted, we're told, by this flood, but a new flood zone map was just released last month. These maps, we're told, take years to make. Burton says the last one they had to go by was made in the 80s. The new maps have aerial photos overlaid onto them, so you can actually look at the floodplain map and look at the flood zone, and you can actually pick out homes, trees, roads, intersections. Were people pushing the envelope before the flood? living in a flood zone and not following the ordinances. There are probably a few people out there that they inherited the place from their mom and dad, they inherited it from their parents, and it ends up being in a flood zone even prior to the time, being built prior to the time that there was even a, a flood map. He says it's different here now. The neighborhoods that dotted this street are quiet, and he thinks even though ordinances here make exceptions for flood plains, what happened here in July was too much to start over for most. Will most stay and rebuild? Are they rebuilding? Where are we? In my, just my opinion in, ta in talking, I think that most won't. Most of them have cleaned up their lot, and that's all they've done. Residents who haven't registered for assistance from FEMA have until Monday, October 12th, to do so, so that's just a few days away. In regard to the cleanup efforts you just saw, they expect to be done, guys, in a couple of months. It's pretty incredible, mm -hmm. Miranda, having seen all of this damage, that they were actually able to clean up so fast. And they did get federal funding, so they've had contractors in, and they've split up the work, as you saw there, mm -hmm. and they're really moving along quickly. That's Still work to be done. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Miranda.